This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by Netflix. Michael Hannon, welcome back. Hey, how's it going? You're excited to be back in front of the camera again? Of course. This is cool. So we talked about the Raspberry Pi in the past, these sort of like $30, $25, $35, $50, depending on where you buy it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a computer. It's got an HDMI output. It's got USB for your keyboard and your mouse, or in this case, you've got external storage. It's got Ethernet. You can use, you can plug Bluetooth modules into it. You can plug Wi-Fi modules into it. The operating system's on the SD card. Yeah. And you've basically bought, brought BitTorrent Sync together with the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, so my, my thought going into this was, what if I could make an off-site storage right. that's super low power and always running, so you don't, have to worry about, you don't have to worry about a computer being on all the time, right. that this you can just plug in a hard drive to the Raspberry Pi and then just always have, maybe you could set up with a friend, have the Raspberry Pi connected at their house, they can have one at your house and it's always syncing your data so that you have that off-site storage. It's kind of like your own personal private Dropbox running over the BitTorrent network. How do you keep it secret on the BitTorrent network? So the way that BitTorrent Sync works, we've used it before. Um, we I showed it off BitTorrent before. BitTorrent Protocol, not network, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So we've showed it off before, but the software, even on the Raspberry Pi, is mm -hmm. extremely easy to use. That It's pretty much just a binary that you run, and then it'll give you a web interface that you can connect to and add the secret code that's generated. So the way you keep your files safe is it generates this really long key that right. no one else can crack or anything like that. And it's kind of funny, like instead of a Dropbox blue box, you end up with a little BitTorrent swirly yeah. up in the toolbar if you're on OS X or, or down in the toolbar if you're, if you're in Windows. So do I have to have a special version of Linux running on the Raspberry Pi to get this running? No, so it's completely sorted, uh, supported in the most popular distro, which is Raspbian. So once you install that, I, I like to install Raspbian first, and then I'll enable SSH. That way I don't have to have a keyboard or monitor connected You're to the Raspberry Pi. You're just old school. You're like tunneling I, SSH protocol, tunneling into my remote Linux box. It's just a little bit easier, I think. Because okay. then you can just connect the Raspberry Pi with Ethernet somewhere. You can throw it in a closet or whatever people do. It's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so once you have that set up, you can just download the binary from BitTorrent. Um, they have it posted on there and then unzip the file and then you literally just run the command and then it gets the web interface running and then you can from there add folders to sync and add secret code so that it pretty much just starts working automatically and then once you have it configured mm -hmm. you can literally just bring it to another location because it's running off of the BitTorrent protocol. You can bring it to like your friend's house, plug in the ethernet, and then it'll just automatically start syncing. Does it start automatically anytime you plug it in somewhere? So no, so there's two ways to do it. There's one where you can add a, a little script inside of the dot config of the, the desktop, and uh -huh. you can have it automatically go to the desktop, but I didn't want to go that route just because then you're using more resources. Right. So I found someone made a really nice script that makes the BitTorrent sync into a service cool. so that it automatically starts up. You don't have to go into the OS desktop. I have a funny feeling that's a cut and paste thing, not something we want to read out. Yeah, the person made it character. so easy, you just <laughs> replace the name of the user that you're using, and that's it. That's really cool. So basically, the only downside to this is is the current Raspberry Pi and basically restricted to USB for your external drives. Yeah. Um, so I can use an external USB enclosure. So I'm not going to have like terabytes of data on tap. Yeah, but I think this is more better for like an offsite thing that you don't have to worry about. You can have a lot of storage, but you're not going to get the greatest performance mm -hmm. from the Raspberry Pi. So don't think of this as like a network attached storage. Right. That it's something part you're of your local network. You're not streaming your Blu-ray video collection. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that route. Right. Though you could probably get some performance out of it. Out of it, it's mm -hmm. probably better as offsite, Got so it. that you don't have to worry about performance too much. This is my low-power emergency backup stored at mom's house or my friend's house, and they're not yeah. even going to notice the electricity. Just kind of exactly, kind of like the crash plan free service, but with the really low power device. And it's like all synchronized and encrypted, and you own it. Yeah, exactly. Awesome stuff, Michael. Thanks. Thank you so much. Show notes, people, is where you're going to find all the links you need to get Raspbian and running BitTor and Sync with the special script so it starts on boot and set up your own personal low power sync station. With more than 26 million members, Netflix is the world's leading internet subscription service for enjoying movies and TV programs. 
Members can instantly watch thousands of titles on a vast array of devices, streaming TV episodes and movies like Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PlayStation 3, and the Nintendo Wii console, plus Apple devices, the Kindle, and Nook. As a Netflix member, you can instantly watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want, for one low monthly price. There are no late fees or due dates. As a new member and a Techzilla viewer, you can get a free 30-day trial membership. Head on over to netflix.com slash techzilla and sign up. And be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you.